Unless you work in an industry that does aerodynamic analysis, seeing professional CFD results would be virtually impossible. Here in this video we get to see this. It gives an insight into a professional making decisions on a virtual Formula 1 car. Previously I analysed a basic model released by the Airshape company that intended to be only a graphics display. This model had a number of aerodynamic issues that Airshape had got the public to propose solutions for. They took those suggestions and added some of their own. We can now see those results for analysis. Even though the last model was just an aesthetic interpretation of this year's Formula 1 regulations, it had enough aerodynamic performance to provide a good base to work from. As a result of the applied improvements, the current model is a serious reflection on aerodynamic performance from a professional team. At the end of this analysis, it's going to propose some solutions to further improve the model. Oh, for this video, I'll do the boring stuff first, and then do the colourful fluid dynamics just after. If you want to see all the changes made by Airshaper, I link their video in the description. That video is a broader overview, where here I'm digging into why the gains exist. This case, compared to the last, there is a dramatic difference in performance. Downforce increased to a CL of 2.496 from 1.523. Drag reduction wasn't dramatic at 1%, but whenever you get free downforce, you'll take that. To summarize the differences, I'm going to do it in one of my favorite plots along the center line of the car under the floor. First was the front wing. It replaced a non-functional one with one that works. This was actually from a member of the public that designed this and got it included because it was good work. Second is the bib. Its bulk was pushed back, providing better integration with the following part of the car. This is represented by the straightness of the graph just here. Next is the biggest difference in the aero performance, the floor fences and or strakes. These are seamlessly interfaced with the midsection of the floor and bend out aggressively to the side, shedding a very powerful vortex that influences the rest of the downstream floor. Everything about the flow thereon is still behaving well and is attached all the way out to the diffuser. Lastly, the floor edge has modifications, but its performance is masked on this plot by the floor fences. Now because we want to find additional improvements for another simulation run, we need a granular view of the flow structures. For presentational purposes, I sliced the fluid domain along the x-axis every 20mm from behind the front wheels to a little way into the diffuser. I'll loop through this a number of times because there are a few things to look at under the floor, at the side and above the body. One of the stated aims for improving the model, Volta from Airshaper said, they are aiming for a 10% reduction in drag and 10% increase in downforce. That level of drag reduction is substantial. Volta identified the area around the sidepod's leading edge and mirror attachment as an area that would be contributing to drag. An image from their report shows a pressure ISO volume in this area. Looking at the animation will follow the air back. Seeing the direction of the line convolutions, we gain an inference on the shape and direction of the flow. When the line is bending, the air is changing direction, usually as a result of a pressure gradient causing rotation. But because this is a slice in a specific direction, it is best representational of an air structure normal to that direction. It is more of a suggestion than a replication. What seems to be happening as the air approaches the mid car, you'll see flow out around the lower corner of the chassis. Air from underneath the chassis is being blocked by the midsection of the car and is building in pressure. This air is being pushed out and up the side. The lines changing direction is because the air is changing direction indicating interacting flow structures from the front wheels, chassis, front wheel and suspension interaction. Just as the floor starts, the air from under the chassis which has an upwards and sidewards momentum begins to be pulled down. All these interacting structures will be flowing straight at the side pod. The flow over the leading edge of the floor works much better than before. But everything at the leading edge of the floor, including the fences, work much better than the previous model. That's just a product of better aligning the surfaces. The only thing left to manage is the upwash from under the chassis. Above the floor, the side pods start a long way back. The side mirror attachment is significantly forward at the side pod. The high pressure at the side pod inlet isn't being managed by these mirror attachments, 
So the fact that there is air being disturbed by the cockpit and the air isn't being managed over the side pod's leading edge, it all then becomes messy. Bringing the side pods forward to under the mirror attachment will manage the air around this region and should reduce drag. While we are looking at this region, the effort that went into the modelling of the mirrors hasn't survived the meshing process, which again will increase the drag. Therefore, similar to the front wing for the last model, the gap needs to be made larger. Before we move along the car, we'll go back under the floor to look at the fences or strakes. These are now working very effectively. We saw that in the plot. The animation shows two main vortices being shed down the floor tunnel. One on the inner fence just at the start of the radius. Then that is joined by one starting similarly off the next fence, which is then amplified by the inner fence creating a very powerful vortex. At this resolution of meshing, they smoosh together to form one vortex that continues down the floor into the diffuser. I suspect at a supercomputing mesh resolution they may preserve their structure. But the principle remains, this is the main downforce creating flow structure for the floor. The interface between the fence and the floor edge is another difficult area of these cars. On the real world cars there's almost a continuous supply of updates throughout the year in this area. This car has a third vortex shed just before the edge that becomes attached to the ground to be absorbed later by the main vortex. The flow around the floor edge region is all flowing in the right direction, out to the side. On top of the floor is a vortex generated by the forward protruding outer floor fence. This ends up crashing into the rear tyre. These are likely the ones seen in the wet weather running with lots of images that have had people drawing circles on. The altered floor edge seems to be quite effective, but I won't comment on how this part of the car can be improved. The area at the front of the floor is enough, as this is where there is still some low hanging fruit. I'll conclude the analysis here to say that the rest of the car is mostly working well. The additional rake included is likely to help create a difference in the graph at the rear. However, before my recommendations slash opinions about the improvements of the aero performance, a note on part of the model. The wheels need to be lowered into the ground with a larger contact patch to be realistic. This will mean significantly more tyre squirt, but the front is also missing the allowed tyre squirt management bodywork, so changing the wheel isn't all negative. It will be just another problem on this not too serious model to be solved in the future. I mean, we are here doing this because we enjoy this. Now my opinions, suggestions and recommendations to improve the model's aerodynamics. I mentioned areas I think that needed cleaning up in the analysis. Here's an elaboration in visual form. The inner fence straight can be used to stop the air from under the chassis spilling out and up the side. This means that it needs to be close to the chassis. This is likely going to affect the mass flow underneath the floor and may push the diffuser beyond its operating window. It will also alter the pressure field and flow direction. The air will then be a bit straighter at the floor mouth. Adding another fence could be helpful, with the inner two mostly responsible for the low pressure field management and then the third bridging the difference between the outer fence and the inner two. The outer fence may also be a little bit more aggressive. Even with the management of the air from under the chassis, the interface between the chassis and the upper floor's leading edge will likely create some rotation, extending the second fence's upper region forward of the floor and above it gives some scope for reducing the rotation or maybe at least guiding it to some extent. Lastly on the fences, they do not need to be vertical. It gives this possibility of very subtle flow manipulation. Concave out on the inner two fences will increase the pressure gradient across them. Releasing the concavity at the right moment will shed the vortice at the right point. Any changes to the mid floor section could be made to work with this very effectively. It can in this case also align the top and the bottom of the fences independently to the flow direction, reducing this low pressure rotation here. As a general concept, inward sloping for the inner fences would transition to an outer slope for the outer fences. Now the side pods. I mentioned before that they should be brought forward and the mirror bodywork will interact with the side pods leading edge. It's similar to a commonly used method of reducing separation from the front corners of trucks. Thus, this mirror strut would then become a drag reducing application. Lastly, the mirror needs its geometry adjusted for better meshing, and then the longitudinal support could be angled outwards to push the messy air down off the side pods. 
A final suggestion is the halo sheds a couple of vortices that look remarkably similar to those shed by a hatchback without a rear spoiler flap. Once added to a hatchback, this flap reduces the drag by 10%, so adding a sharp trailing edge to the roll hoop should give a small but cheap drag reduction.